We are doing so great. Let's see what video this is. We are on video number five. This demonstration is invoice came in. It has a purchase order number, but the lines do not match the receipt. Um, so what happened is the procurement team received or created the purchase order, sent it to the vendor, received the product, but the vendor invoiced us a totally different amount. So again, is it up to the AP team to investigate that? Or can we assign that back to the, to the purchasing team or to the buyer? Let's dive in and I'll show you how this is going to work. So we are, again, just kind of doing a fake um, entry from the vendor where the vendor sends us the invoice. And this invoice is for $225, I'm sorry, is for $175. And the receipt is for $225. So let's go ahead and just submit this. Um, as you know, it's going to take it a few seconds to process. And let's go into our vendor invoice automation. I love this workspace um, because essentially um, AP would just need to stay in this workspace. I imagine you'll work these captured invoices. You won't need to worry about working anything in the receive files. Um, anything that comes here should probably be directed back to your IT team if there's any failures that from your SharePoint folder or um, from your emails. But if all else fails, you can always upload, manually upload any invoices. Now, I think I mentioned before in other videos, you can upload, I can show you, you can upload up to, and it's drag and drop, so beautiful, yay, Microsoft. Um, but you can upload at 20 at a time and look at all the different file types that you can actually upload. Very nice, Microsoft, right? Um, because I know sometimes we aren't able to use the email process and they're coming into a folder. Um, for whatever reason, and we do need to have the option to manually upload them, that is available for you as well. So that invoice came in, usually takes about 10 seconds once the um, email is received from the vendor. So it was just received into the inbox maybe five seconds ago. Then you can see it here in waiting, usually takes about 10 seconds to process um, from waiting to processing what we've been finding out. Now you can see it's processing. And then another 10 seconds or less to go from processing over into captured. So we'll see it here in a second. Demoing when it's kind of a process is sometimes a little challenging because I don't want to waste anybody's time. I know time is valuable, but I do want to show you real time what this looks like. Um, so yeah, maybe a little over 10 seconds. But again, a user isn't going to be sitting here waiting for these to move up. A user is going to, as they're coming in, not even notice they come into this received files. Um, they're just going to populate here in captured invoice if they need to be addressed. If they don't, everything happens automatically. A user will never even see it here in captured. So it's in capture. Let's see, it came over. Did it already transfer? Um, the invoice number was 26. Yes, that fast it transferred over into pending vendor invoices. Now we didn't have any pending vendor invoices. So if I refresh this, oh, it's already there. Number 26. So let's open it up. Now, this situation is a little bit different because there was no errors. The PO came over. Um, the lines came over from the purchase order. But when we try to um, update the match status, we're going to get a failure here. And this is where we would have to forward this email over to um, our buying team to address. So this is one really that sits here in pending vendor invoice until the buying team gets notification. Now we could set this up in the workflow somehow. I haven't fully tested it yet. That, that when it'll still get submitted to the workflow, but it will route if we'll put some criteria if um, match status is not yet run or failed, because in a minute here, this should fail. Um, let me go ahead and run the automations. And so we can see what happens here on match status. 
So just so you know, in the background, I updated the process automation. So at 255, the system's going to try to match receipts and it's going to get a fail. At 256, it's going to try to um, update the match status. And at 257, it's going to submit to workflow. It's 255, so I'm going to give it a few minutes to process. Okay, so it is trying to update the match status here. I'm wondering if it's going to stay in, um, yeah. It is going to continue to run. So see how the system says that run, it's running the first time, uh, a maximum of 24 attempts al are allowed. Now, what I'm pretty sure will happen is this will keep running until it can update the, the receipts. Right now, it won't. Um, let's wait a second until these other processes go through just to confirm my what I understand the system to do. So this is what happened. This is the results. I'm going to move this in the middle. Notice that this product receipt to invoice line is in progress. It ran two times. What that means is it can't match the receipt lines with the vendor invoice lines. And so this is a situation where we would need to manually submit this to the workflow so that it can be routed to a buyer for either review or approval, or you can simply send an email, maybe attach a note. Um, in this case, we would say something like um, a note that says um, buyer, uh, assigned to buyer. And we could say something to email buyer to update the receipt or contact vendor for new invoice. So that way we know where the invoice is standing. Now, if the buyer finds out that the invoice is correct and that the PO, the receipt needs to be canceled and the PO, because they actually did receive um, and the amounts were incorrect on the PO because the quantities were right. It was the unit prices that were wrong. Let me show you what can happen here um, when we do that. So when the buyer, so we're gonna go in and we're actually going to fix this as the buyer. So the PO number is 19. This is really neat because if the buyer goes in the background, realizes that the receipt is wrong and goes in. Okay, so a pending vendor invoice is attached. So we would need, interesting. Hmm. More process reviews to determine this. Let's see if we go into the actual invoice. We take off the automation. And we try to match these receipts. So all the quantities passed. It's the amount that didn't pass. Interesting. This one does matched. So this one was going to be a match. And this one failed because the amount is incorrect. So I'm not a procurement guru here, but if we could change the amount to be the correct $75, I'm wondering if this couldn't uh, um, go ahead and process here through the AP. I'm going to get back to you on this one because I think this one needs more uh, research.
So more to come on this one. Thanks for watching. I'll move on to the next video.